Hello, and welcome to AISD TV News for the week of October 28th. I'm Haley Weir. And I'm Gdiala Beattie. As you can tell, it's a Halloween edition. Don't eat the props. I'll start off first by turning to the ghost of the AISD TV News past. That's right, Emily Seymour, who sat in this seat around 10 years ago, came around to her old haunts last week to be part of a really cool event with the special education and student council students at Bowles Junior High, making Halloween costumes for the neonatal intensive care babies at Methodist Dallas Medical Center. So take it away, Emily. Hi, I'm Emily Seymour, AISD TV 10-year alumni. Now I work with Dallas Methodist in their NICU, and today we got to partner with Bowles Junior High, Prevoke, and all curriculum students. So what did y'all do here today? Okay, today our team got together and our kids, we cut out some material and they were able to make costumes that little NICU babies will get to wear and be photographed for Halloween. And why was this special to you? Because we're connecting community-based projects with our students and we want them to interact more with the community and bring their abilities and their... Um, they we can get to do. show what our kids can do. Because they can do more than what we give them credit for. And we want them to show their, uh, their skills to the community. I uh, helped everybody make their costumes today. And what costumes did you help make? Batman, Donald Duck, Strawberry. And why is this special to you? Because uh, my brother was in Nikki, I uh, probably help everybody here today. Yes, I cut my butterfly. I did a bit glue on it. What costume did you make today? I have uh, minions. Minions? And did you have fun making it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I made a I made a Captain America. And how did you make it? Uh, with glue. And I cut it. And was it fun? Yes, yeah, very fun. Do you know who's going to get these costumes? The babies. Why is making these costumes for Nikki Baby special to you? Uh, it makes it special for me because when I was born two weeks early and had a small hole in my heart, so I think it's really cool that we're helping out babies in the NICU. This is Emily Seymour. Back to you. Thanks, Emily. That was so cool. You know what else is cool? Kindness. And it paid off for the students and teachers at Ellis Elementary last week as the City of Arlington visited and honored the school for acts of kindness. Congrats to Ellis fifth grader Ali A and second grader Amari Yuna S for being honored. And way to go to the teachers Nora Berry and Carmen Diarmis. And we can't forget about teacher Ann Stovall's class. In our district, kindness really does pay. More congrats are in order for Knox Elementary kindergarten teacher Ms. Campos Ortiz. Last week, she was surprised in her classroom to find out she was named an excellent educator in an award that's sponsored by NBC5 and SMU. She was nominated for the award by her children. Ms. Campos Ortiz's full story will air this week on NBC5. I said, what happened? Something is wrong because she's here. Oh. Oh. And then I saw my other two uh -huh. kids and I see flowers and so oh, oh. it's not my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Something else. Her great work also earned Knox Elementary a $1,000 check. The first ever FFA Fall Festival was held last Saturday at the Agricultural Science Center. The event was well attended. There was music provided by Young Stars and Guitars, which included some of our talented AISD students. There was also a petting zoo, vendors, a craft area, guided tour of the facility, and CTC cosmetology students were on hand to paint faces. For those not afraid to brave the chilly tents, there was also bobbing for apples. There are plenty of places for great photos, like this guy, who was all excited about being on the tractor. Maybe he'll be a future farmer too. And because we like to congratulate people around here, let's congratulate an entire school. That school is Bailey Junior High. It was the only district school to receive distinctions in every category from the TEA, going seven for seven. Way to go, Rams. Halloween isn't the only happy occasion around here. We also like happy birthdays, and we'd like to send a big one out to Rankin Elementary, which recently turned 60. We have a little Rankin history for you, too. The school is named for Bess Rankin. Eeyore, did you know that Bess Rankin was the first woman principal in AISD? No. Well, it's true. She was the principal at the Old North Side High School. See, you really can learn something from watching the news. 
And now it's time to turn things over to Courtney for sports. Take, Take it away, away Courtney. Courtney. Hello everybody, I'm Courtney Parks and I've got week nine highlights from the wet Drizzly game day last Friday, which was kind of miserable. Let's start off with Sam Houston at Lamar, where on their first possession, Lamar's Caleb Phillips rushes in from 12 yards out to put up the first point. Phillips takes in from the three-yard line to put up another touchdown. Next possession, first play, Lamar's Jack Dawson hits Cam Brady for this 54-yard touchdown. Not to sound like a broken record, but next possession, first play, Dawson hits Trevon West for this 50-yard touchdown completion. The Vikings outscored Sam 20 to nothing in the first quarter. It wasn't until late in the third quarter before Sam Houston scored with this Jaden Homley six-yard rush. The Vikings easily win 45-13. At Wildman Field, Bowie's Revon Ponder hits Jimmy Valson for this 59-yard score on the second play of the game against Pasco. Bowie scores on its next possession with this two-yard rush from Deontay Prevost. The Panthers' Elliot Titus scores from 33 yards out to make the game 14-6. The Vols answer with Marcella Sims scoring on this 32-yard run. Then Bowie poured it on after that. Sims rushes 26 yards for another touchdown. And Ponder hits Trent Scott for a 31-yard score to give Bowie a 41-6 lead at the half. The Vols shut down the Panthers in the second half and add more points. Bowie sends Pasquale home with a huge loss, 58-6. Over at UTA Maverick Stadium, we pick up the action with Martin Warrior Chris Kraft rushing to bring the score 30-zip against the Trimble Tech Bulldogs with a little over eight minutes left in the first half. The Bulldogs lose the ensuing kickoff and on first down, Jaden Miles travels 31 yards before getting tackled right on the goal line. That's okay though. Next play, he finishes the job. On the Warriors' next possession, Zach Lundell finds Dwayne Williams for this 56-yard hookup. Trimble Tech had a bad snap and found itself punting from its own one-yard line. Jonathan Carter returns this 26-yard kick for another Martin score, making it 49-zip at the half. The Warriors muzzle the Bulldogs 61-0. Elsewhere in the district, Arlington stops its losing streak with a win over North Crowley, 49-7. Seguin had a bye week. In District 4-6A standings, Bowie and Martin are both 5-0 in district play, followed by Lamar and Arlington. Sam, Pascal, and North Crowley each have one district win. This week, Lamar is at Bowie, Martin travels to Pascal, the oldest city rivalry, Sam Houston at Arlington, and Seguin travels to Burleson to play the Centennial Spartans. In District 4 6A Volleyball, it's your undefeated Martin Warriors as district champions, followed by Pascal, Lamar, and Arlington, rounding out the playoff teams. Good luck in the playoffs, ladies. That's all we have for sports. I'm Courtney Parks, and I'll see you in the stands. That's it for this spectacular edition of AISD TV News. I'm Gadir Alavidi. And I'm Haley Weir. We hope you have a great week, and your Halloween candy, nothing but the good stuff. Have a happy, happy Halloween! Halloween.